Look what I got. Engine finally came. I'm going to save uh, most of the backstory, but basically uh, the machine shop took an entire month to get this the block, uh, sub-assembly, and the head prepared. And all I had to do was clean it, check it, and uh, that took forever. So luckily it's here now. Let's get the install in. So first thing I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to install the crankshaft. Uh, get the bearings in there. Get the thrust washers. I do have my oil squirters in there. They're the five millimeter. Uh, the thrust washers go here. They face out. So I'll get the one, two, three, four, five uh, main bearings in there. Lube it up. Get the crankshaft in there, and we'll get it torqued down. Now in the older videos, I did check the uh, tolerances. So I know I'm fine, so I'm not going to worry about the tolerances for uh, the mains uh, because I did check the tolerances for I did check the tolerances for the rod caps, and this crank is uh, came with the new bearing set too. So this, this is not just like a bearing. That, I, that was bought separately from the crankshaft. They're all, they just came from the manufacturer. And these are engine tech parts I'm using. The only thing is open should my thrush washers. Doing this assembly process, I mean, I do have engine assembly, but I'm just going to use motor honey. I mean, it'll work perfectly fine. You just need something to coat the bearings uh, during the first startup, and basically the engine's going to take over from there. So you'll be fine. So just for those people who don't have engine lube, I'm just going to use this. Trust me, you'll be fine. put motors together with just regular engine oil and never had any problems. So facing out, you see those grooves right there? The other side's flat. The block, the bearings had an oil groove. These that goes on the cap don't. Now if you notice, oh shoot, the lock for the bearing, the claw is in the middle with the ones with the rod cap. Well, the cap here. The ones that go in the block, the claw is going to be offset, so you can't really screw them up. This is number three. Um, I can put lube on this, but I mean, I do have it on the uh, crank here, so it will be fine. There's just a nice little film there. And uh, everything from one, which is a timing chain, is going to be on the side. One, two, three, four, five. Here's our three. And uh, this is going to have a direction three. And it's going to face the number one. Also, how I know, because one of the dials <laughs> came with the cap here, and it didn't stay in the block, so not a big deal. So I'm going to put three in first, and I'm going to proceed to put in the appropriate main cap. So here's my bearings. Here's five, it has an arrow there. I'm gonna flip it around, put my bearing in there. And uh, one, two, three, four, five. We're gonna face that the same direction as three. And I'm gonna do all of them like that. All right, the torch sequence is gonna be a X pattern. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And it'll be, it's going to be 15 foot-pounds, 30, and then 90 degrees. Uh -oh. <laughs> I'm 
I'm just going um, straight to 30, so y'all can do it how you want to do it, but this will be perfectly fine. If it was a head gasket, I'll take it a little more seriously, but this is honestly just going to be perfectly fine. All right, I got my white out on here. I'm just going to hit 90 degrees. So if the opposite is 180 and half of 180 is going to be 90. So I'm going to do one. I'm going to show you what this one look like. So there's my 90 there. So we're here. Now we're at 90. I'm going to do the same for all of them in the torch sequence it recommended, but I'm just going to do my way each cap in an X pattern. Alright, everything's tight. Now, logically, you'll want to make sure that it spins freely when you tighten out each one. Uh, I check my clearances, so I know I'm fine and everything works perfect, so I'm not going to worry about it. Alright, working on getting the pistons installed now. Uh, I do have my old school ring compressor. I got my new rod and piston here. The pistons came from Engine Tech. Rod is from the dealer. I've replaced two new rods. You have to look at the previous video and see that. So you have two notches here. These are going to face the timing components. And if it's facing the timing components, the rod are installed properly. The rods are only going to go in one direction. So they have dials on them. You can't screw it up. Put my spring compressor on here. Oh shit! I'll drop my. Make sure this. Make sure it's flat. Make sure the rings are compressed. Put my cap here that fell. So the rings are good and compressed. I'll make sure everything's flat. I have oil in my cylinder here. I'm going to face the appropriate direction. And I meant to have the uh, piston skirt out a little bit. That's what you want. You don't want to have it sitting in there. You actually want it to where it'll sit partially inside the bore here. Alright, cool. Got me an old hammer, mallet. Everything's tight. And we're going to run it down. Just like that. So if, it, if you hit a hard spot, pull it back out and try it again. Make sure your rings are compressed and make sure everything's flush. Shit. Screwing up life. So everything's fine. It should just simply go down on its own. Well, with a little encouragement. I'm going to rotate it, grease the cap, the bearing, and proceed to install everything. Oh shit, I'm screwing up. Alright, I'm take this off. I need to get the sub assembly on there. I can get all the bolts in there. I was only able to get a couple. Alright. going to come in contact with our rod here. There we go. Let me get some of my stuff together. I'm going to add a little bit of my motor honey. So that's my assembly loop. Put a little bit on the crank here. Again, we just need something to coat the barren doing it first startup all right we're going to introduce the rod with the crank in its journal here's our little notch that needs to be facing number one and again they go in one direction here our dials are lining up if I were to flip it around the dials wouldn't line up and it wouldn't work properly so it's a 12 point
Now I already checked my clearances so I know everything's fine. And I'm going to check my uh, Titan sequence. And I'm pretty sure it's like a three step and, and uh, the third step probably being a 90 degree. But more than likely me, I'll just do two steps. So these were 14 millimeter for the main caps. It's going to be a 12 millimeter for the uh, rod end caps here. And I'm going to do the same thing for all of them. Make sure it spins over. And um, pretty much go from there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and tighten these this cap up here. It needs to be at 18 foot pounds. And then it needs to be an additional 90 degree. Now, it's recommended that you go several steps to achieve 18 foot pounds. But uh, I never had any problems. Now, I'm going to do this without paint. And how I'm going to do it, I'm just going to get a roundabout angle and just go 90 degrees from where I am. But uh, it still would be a really good idea to put paint on it and not do it that way. But I'm going to um, do all of them like this and uh, be pretty much fine. Be good to go. So here on the sub-assembly, I'm going to put sealant from in from corner here all the way down to the bottom corner. Same on the opposite side. Just glue it all the way through these channels, all the way up to here. The glue doesn't have to go on the outside here, just the inside. Torquing all my bolts down at uh, 20 foot pounds. Now this one here is was tucked tucked away and I, I like man it was hard to find out I forgot about this bolt and this is where the oil filter housing threads go. Uh, torque specs for that. I got new uh, bearings for my balance shaft. These are Seal Power brand. Let's look at these pushed in there. I don't want to fit in that wheel. Oh, the wheel. So we're good now. All right, these have to be placed. Oh fuck. Oh boy. Clean that off. These have to be placed in the fashion to where everything's aligned properly. Uh, 
let me get those and uh, we'll go from there. So I'm dealing with the balance shaft installation. I got my new bearings installed. The two balance shafts are different. All right, they only gonna go in one spot. You can't screw it up. Now here's the dial here. I got the pistons at top dead center. There's a notch uh, for this drive gear on the crank. It needs to be offset. All right. I'm gonna place these in here as per the directions. So these, instead of being faced straight down, they're gonna have you face slightly inward with one another. So that's not correct right there. This is more like how they need to be placed. And then that notch is going to be leveled off right there. So they'll be slightly inward. And the notch will be exposed slightly. are the same size if I recall properly. You saw the painted holes at the bottom. These were actual holes. There's going to be like an imprint of a round hole, but it's not going to be an indention. There's just going to be a print there, and they're going to be facing the 90 degrees. So if they were aligned properly, like offset slightly, those two holes will be matched together. You're going to tighten these down at 16 foot pounds and 90 degrees. Turns. 
Turns no problem. Pick those line back up. It's uh, 180 off there. Brand new water pump here. So we got this. Water pump, uh, the, it's a water pump, the oil pump is going to be torqued down at 14, so about 15, suffice. Alright, in the back of the motor here, there's a oil control filter, um, and I'm pulling this, I pull it out to clean it just because the motor had locked up, uh, because of the conditions, if it wasn't, for this, then I would have just left it in there, and I'm just taking some brake cleaner and clean the strainer out. I'm just going to replace it back where I got it, and uh, lock it back up. And I'm going to install the water jacket spacer. That's this joker here. That's going in there, and uh, I got my head gasket. Now, there's a huge difference, well, there's a small difference between the head gasket that it came with versus the aftermarket gasket here. This is going to be a multi-layer steel gasket. It's three layers, what it looked like. And uh, you can't put it in the wrong way. You, well, you can. This is actually the incorrect way. You want to make sure all the channels are matched up here. See, there's openings. So I need to turn this, what it looks like, upside down. And nope, that's still the wrong way. And yep, so we can actually screw up. So just make sure the gasket's in the appropriate area. Make sure all the whole, most, a great majority of these holes are lined up like they're supposed to. And uh, sometimes they actually have an up symbol on here or, or a notch or indicator. Uh, but you see, you can put it in the wrong or incorrect way. Um. Now, uh, let's see, let me go get the head and show you that so the head was shaved I got it milled and what we did was replace the uh, valve seals because that was a more logical replacement being that we were still building this on the on the budget uh, the the valve seals were leaking and this car did consume oil to the point where it locked up so even though I'm doing the rings, I want to go ahead and make sure the valve seals are good. I want to still keep within the budget so I didn't get the valve job done. So I don't have to do any type of um, valve adjustments. Don't want to get into that. So uh, I do need to make sure I get everything done properly. So I'm not going to record every single thing. Uh, and this is just basically going to be a simple head replacement. You know, I'm just going to... Uh, record the timing chain and some of the other components because I don't want to make it too in-depth and too lengthy. I don't want to lose the interest of the people. And I don't want to screw up. So we'll just do the timing chain after I get the head installed and the clearance is checked. I do have new head bolts. I have a new VVT actuator. I got new timing chain components. All this stuff is like brand new. So uh, let me get all this stuff taken care of on my end and I'll just film the timing chain components being replaced. And maybe if I figure out there's probably going to be any questions in regards to the, you know, the valve train or whatever, I'll probably answer that. But I do need to check all this stuff and make sure everything is where it needs to be so I don't screw myself over. Now, I will say, if you haven't looked at the last video, there is a bearing that go here. So don't forget to put a bearing in here once you finish installing this motor. 
because you will have a, a loss of oil pressure and VVT problems lightly. I haven't done that and I'm even on telling myself that's why I want to film this so I won't screw up. So when I put these head bolts in there I'm going to put that bearing right there with the new bolts so I won't forget it. I'm just going to lay it in there. Alright I'm going to have to pull this back off so I'm just going to give you the torque specs for this here. So it's going to act like I never put this on. Um, this is a new one, new tensioner for the uh, oil pump drive. Uh, I didn't, I should have put the keys in there first. And uh, to get these out from the old one, you just take a flathead, knock it at the end here, and it'll force itself out of the groove. So put that down right in there. here like so it should fall into place and I'm off all right uh, we're gonna try to skip my phone is literally keep saying it's hot all right I'm gonna um, try to rush through this so I, I got my uh, keys knocked in there now these are two different these even though these are identical these are the gears that go on the, <coughs> the crank here one is going to fit a lot looser than the other that has play in it. This one right here doesn't have play. So what? Now don't get these screwed up because if you do, you'll be shit out of luck. Put it that way. You're gonna take all the stuff back down because the play in there is gonna call the lightly gonna call the check in light to come on. This is gonna go on the oil, the one that has the play on it. I'm gonna leave that there, and this one is gonna go on the front here. So uh, where our timing chain is gonna line up. So I'm gonna put those right there. The gear down here needs to be facing the if the uh, the dials, the keys needs to be facing uh, the exhaust side, and I'm gonna line my mark up with my notch here. Walk that on there and everything's lined up so once I put tension there I should be able to put put the little notch in there and it lines up so I can see that hole just fine everything's lined up now I'm gonna put this right back at top dead center but when you're doing the uh, oil pump the uh, keyway has to be facing the VVT side of the um, engine this back here so everything is lined up properly I should do this first all right um, that's there now I just need to put a tensioner back it's a 10 millimeter supposed to be nine foot pounds I'm just gonna get a couple love taps And I'm gonna check it with my quarter inch. It should be nice and tight. So everything's fine there. Everything's lined up. There's the hole. I could literally stick something through there and it'll go into a lock position. There and there. So we're good. I'm gonna put this right back at top dead center. And I'm going to flip my motor around and we'll work on getting the um, other timing components taken care of, the main components. We're going to work on getting the main timing done here. Here's our timing marks here on the uh, intake and here on the exhaust. I have on these uh, Cloyt, Cloyt's timing component set, I have two matching links here. And I'm just going to simply just put them on those marks there and I'm going to turn the cam gears out they'll line up like they're supposed to
So you have. Oh, I need to get back over here. So you have two timing marks on the back of the cam caps right here, and that's where. The focus. And that's where the timing mark should be lined up. It should be corresponding with this here, from here on back to here. So I need to move it over technically, but uh, they're they're close. So we're fine. All right, I got my uh, timing components installed. I got the uh, guide here and the uh, tensioner that's installed. My time marks are lined up like they're supposed to. Everything's fine here. Um, don't forget, get this camera over here. Okay, the F. This is the pickup trigger wheel. It has an F on it. That's where it needs to be facing outward. There's no F on the back, so don't screw this up. So I'm gonna put C
installed my tensioner, but unfortunately the gasket that was on there was already glued up because the dealer went through it already and did pistons before, so I can't reuse that gasket. And I'm not going to use a composite gasket. I'll use glue before I use a composite gasket and put it that way. So I'll just deal with the repercussions. Of using this, I want to make sure that it only goes in that way. Just want to make certain. I think I'm fine. So once I uh, tighten it up, it'll release that lock, and it'll lock in place. It'll get. It'll generate tension. Spin it around and should tighten up. And I did not get it on camera. Uh, you just basically just bump the engine over and it'll tighten up automatically. You just need to uh, create some slack so that pin can fall out. And uh, we're tight now. All right, this is the last thing I'm gonna do, man. Conclude this video. I got my oil pan sealed up, and I'm gonna. Put this on there once I figure out the pattern here. We did this back in school with our basic shape, so I should know this. I think it go this way. Yeah, there we go. Oh shit. Ah oh, shit. Shit, shit, shit. Where's another stud? I don't. Oh, I think one of the studs probably came out. Okay, here we go. I got one stud in there. I'm gonna run these bolts in there. Yeah, both of the studs. I got two studs. Okay, that worked out. <clears throat> I can hit it with some brake cleaner and get some of that off of there. So I got quite a bit done today. Uh, it's built for the most part, and all I gotta do is put the topical parts on, such as outlet, gaskets, valve cover, and um, crank pulley. You know, just a little miscellaneous stuff in the sense crank sensor. And I want to make sure I got my crank seal installed well. I didn't use any tool or anything. I think I might need to knock the base down there. If it's, I don't know. We'll see when I get it on the jacks. The um, stand there. Once I get it up in the air, I had to put the flex flex plate on. Now I'll put a little bit of oil in here um, before I put the valve cover on. I'm not going to fill it up with oil or anything until I get the engine in there. Uh, so I'll just get the rest of the stuff put on, the cosmetic stuff, like later in the in the, in the upcoming days, and uh, so I can get it prepared to get dropped in. I'll put the intake on last. So you got to pull that off. Or do that while it's in the car, because the harness and how it wraps around the back here. So um, this took a couple hours. Hopefully, I'm gonna try to consolidate everything that we can get the important stuff. I saved a lot of time by not showing how to do the head, like put the head gasket on there and stuff, because it's very basic, nothing special. Uh, torch specs for that was um, 52 foot pounds and then 90 degrees. That's it. The uh, torch specs for these were 40 pounds, 40 foot pounds. Um, and I just tightened the, the uh, cover bolts here, so it'll they're, they're snug. There's this, it's not a thing of importance. Um, the 
I don't want to go back over and tell you something wrong as far as what the mains and the rod caps were, but both of them, they, you know, you go through your specs of, of initial torque and then you go an additional 90 degrees, so. But uh, I've done one of these before and uh, it turned out very well. Every, most of the stuff in here is engine tech and I got a Cloy's timing chain set. Uh, we got all new stuff and all new components and um oh yeah these are 22 foot pounds these 14 millimeter bolts and then the tins here just snug down like nine foot pounds but uh, i'm gonna get on man and uh, we'll we'll finish up and i'll show it show this motor running see if i can uh see if i can if i still got it <laughs> so it looked pretty good not not disappointed by any means despite the uh machine shop taking forever it literally took 30 days to get this stuff back but i'm not disappointed because I had a, a fucked up couple weeks, to be honest. I had to shell out some money and fix some stuff because of <laughs> just we'll say that story for another day. But they're fixed. Everybody's taken care of. But other than that, look, hit that link. Subscribe to the channel. Stay informed. Have that reassurance of my work. See you on the next one.